three, two, one, and we're live. How's it going, Forrest? Welcome to another Father Son podcast. First one with cameras. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> It's your turn to talk now. Oh, I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm a little rusty. Yeah. Um, we've been doing a lot of jujitsu training videos, wrestling training videos, Muay Thai training videos. In fact, you've been uh, doing some of the videos. Yeah. Uh, I taught some and I've been in all of them. So, uh, almost all of them. Yeah. Except for the cardio one. Yeah, those are entirety ones, so that's a little bit different. Um, so, obviously we got COVID going on in case everyone's Died or hiding under a rock or I don't know what happened. Maybe they've been in the hospital for like the last three months. But uh, we have no gyms. Uh, pretty much everything's been closed except for my work. And uh, <laughs> your school's closed. Mom's working uh, one day a week, but she's working from home. So uh, how's all this uh, affecting you? Um, at first, it like, well, at first I was, I was fine with it. I thought it would just be normal. But like, as it's gone further and further, as like it kept on going and going, it's just it's just become like really annoying and making it hard and uh had me worried for like it really made me nervous for a little bit um not i wasn't like thinking the whole world was going to shut down but it definitely was affecting me mentally for a little bit and it still kind of is now um and just everybody arguing about like their point of view it it's like we have disagreements within the house even of what we should be doing as a like as a country and as as a uh, kind of more of a global global population now <laughs> um yeah it's just it's just kind of been a pain in the butt when you say that it's affected you mentally what do you mean by that um so <laughs> So, uh, between being stressed with school and just being stressed about um, the virus in general. Um, are you stressed that you're going to catch it or are you stressed that? I don't know. I was just putting stress on me because like parts of, like it just kind of feels like the world is falling apart, right? Especially early on. Like with restaurants closed and everything closed, it just kind of feels like the world is all going to poop. Um, and uh, I, I guess that was what was putting the stress on me. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really afraid of catching it. I don't really have any underlying medical conditions. I'm a pretty young, healthy kid. So the chances of me getting it and being severely affected by it are low. Or the chances of, get, of me getting it is high, but the chances of me like being affected by it is pretty low as the dog barks. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really worried about catching it. I think it's just kind of the effect it's had on everyone. At least it's not in here uh, farting. Sometimes he's in here with me and Ray, and uh, he, he blows it up in here, dude. It was pretty bad. So one time he pooped in here, it was the worst. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so having dogs are distracting. Um, speaking of being distracted, uh, how's it doing? How is getting homework done going for you? Well, I have a, I have a pretty strong opinion about school at home. I, I, it doesn't. School at home for like elementary school kids seems a little bit more okay, right? Uh, the, the material in elementary school isn't super hard to understand and you don't really have lecture classes yet until really about seventh or eighth grade um, in public schools at least like that's really when lectures start to become important and school from home obviously means no lectures lectures because we're not at school uh, I, I'll say it most of my teachers are a bit on the older side and probably struggle a bit with technology so it's not like everyone is going to be able to do a 40 minute lecture like even once a week um, the most I've got, the most consistency in most classes I've done is with science, where I have a younger teacher who's a little more tech savvy, and we do one class a week for about 40 minutes. Um, I think without lectures, like, I just don't, I'm not really grasping material well and really understanding it like I would with a teacher. And especially in the beginning, it all just kind of felt pointless. It just kind of felt like I had a never ending stack of homework to do. And that's been super stressful because I've, I've been stressed, one, there's a lot of work, two, I'm behind, and uh, and three, it just feels like I'm not learning anything. Uh, let's break down your school a little bit. So you're not really doing any Zoom online lecture uh, classes then, right? There's no... Uh, the only ones we're doing is once a week on Life Size uh, with my science teacher. But besides that, I mean, every so often we'll get a lab class uh, or a We'll have our lab teacher do an online thing, but mostly for 20, 30 minutes. And besides that, yeah, not really. 
So you're not a, what school do you go to? City Honors. I know that you go to City Honors, but this is for, you know, I know. For the podcast. I just, <laughs> I always feel weird, like, saying I'm from City Honors, because it's always talked about as a super prestigious school. Yeah, so you're in one of the best schools in the Buffalo Public School District, and you're barely getting any online learning. So what are you doing, getting homework packets? Um, I know, obviously I know what yeah. you're getting, but... <laughs> so for the people at home, basically, what my school is doing is... Um, we have Schoology. Uh, if your kid doesn't have Schoology, what it is is it's basically uh, it's um it's it's like the perfect school at home tool. Uh, it's a website, and you can go to your courses and your groups um, and see kind of work and updates from the school. Uh, our principal keeps updating us on you know kind of how to deal with it and what we're doing, uh, especially for the high schoolers who are taking AP exams, which are still going on online. Um, and just notifying us about other stuff about the school. And then our teachers are obviously sending us work through there, whether it be a link to another website and instructions on how to get that work done, or be a, or it may be an assignment in Schoology itself, or it could be uh, something where we have to hand something in, or we do it at home, take a picture, and send it in like that. How's uh, taking a picture and sending it in going for you? I, well, my phone... I take pictures with my phone because, like, the webcam on the computer, one, I don't think I can access it, and two, it sucks. But what sucks about my phone is every time I try and take a picture, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be up like this, and um, I'll try and take a picture, and it'll rotate. So the pictures always come out horizontal, but they're supposed to be vertical, <laughs> so I have to keep retaking them. And it takes, like, ten minutes just to get pictures of everything. It's nice having cameras. You can just show the camera what you're trying to do right. instead and, of trying to describe it. <laughs> and the reason I keep glancing at this camera is it's a phone camera, and I'm making sure we don't run out of memory or anything. Uh, even if we do, we'll just shoot the camera B. We got two cameras rolling in here. Uh, my webcam on my computer is not working, so we were down to two, and we had to use my phone for the other one. So ideally, we want to have three. We want to have a room camera, one on each of us, but it didn't quite work out that way. No. And Forrest kind of rearranged the room, and he messed up my my paint my portrait there so i have I'd to be look. sick if that was an actual painting yeah i have to glue it in or something i don't know what's going on over there coach matt got me that that was awesome that is a really cool thing I love yeah that's my favorite my favorite picture of me getting my black belt so even the only thing that's wrong with it is my black belt's too long on one side now <laughs> it looks kind of silly every time i look at it it bothers me yeah but back to school at home so yeah i mean it's just been assignments on assignments and i've been behind because between the stress and me just kind of feeling uh feeling kind of overwhelmed by all the work and the fact that there is so much work and i'm, I'm like i don't understand it and that's really frustrating and just the fact that me looking at schoology when i'm behind is me is the equivalent of all your teachers giving you a packet at once and you having to like stare at it and you know you have to do it at some point but thankfully it seems like um they're not going to take the grades from the school at home period strictly uh, then they're just going to figure out a way to do it but I mean if this was the strict grades that they were using it would be horrible like, right. we're not understanding like it's harder to understand things without teachers giving uh, being able to do like classes with everybody um, and me having uh, me having a chronic issue of not being able to reach out for help when I need it uh, between me just being between me just struggling to reach out for help and teachers not being able to really, you know, provide online classes really well, it's just, it's kind of just been a nightmare. When you say you're unable to reach out for help, do you mean emotionally, like you're afraid to reach out for help or like physically you can't get a hold of your teacher? I can get a hold of my, clear it up? yeah, I can get a hold of my teacher. It's just always been uh, this mental block that I have, like there's a couple of mental blocks I have. Uh, that come up and I, I think it's just because I overthink things a lot but a problem I've always had is like an inability to just go up to my teacher even when I'm in school to ask for help and uh, I still get by like I still feel like I'm understanding things uh, it's not like I'm just you know scraping by either but um, I think if I did reach out for help more and I wasn't so stubborn all the time I think I could 
be like a much better student. Well, you definitely get that from both your parents. Neither one of us are really the kind of person that ever asked for help, me or your mom. Right. But also, that, that's going to hold you back in life and business and everything too, because you're going to have to learn how to delegate stuff. And when you don't understand something, you're going to have to learn to ask. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is probably good training, probably better training than we had coming up. So. Right. Just maybe it's a blessing, kind of. Yeah, with this whole school at home, it's really made me realize, um, one, I'm horrible at getting things done. Um, two, I just have a lot of mental blocks that like really stop me from uh, achieving what I can achieve. Uh, I have problems giving myself a schedule. I have problems setting my own goals. Um, those are problems I faced before. And, and just now is we've been, actually had talks on podcasts about those before, right? And now it's just been dialed up to like fifteen. This, uh, um, so it's helped me realize that I need to, you know, work on things just like everybody does. Um, and like I think some of my problems are some things that a lot of people deal with. Um, I'm not trying to make myself look better, but I think. There is some problems with like everybody in general struggling with uh, self-discipline, especially. And, um, you know, I, I am kind of a nerd and I watch a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of like a lot of these content creators struggle like getting out constant content. And even like us, we, we didn't get a video out the other day because it was too late. Someone was doing homework. Right. And again, that's a that's a self-discipline, self-discipline problem. And um I think just like a lot of people, I have some things to work on, and it's going to be a tough road to really, you know, perfect my ability to work efficiently. Well, we talked about this the other day, actually, uh, when we had to break down and about homework and get homework done. Right. Um, we always talk about homework, and it's tough because you're digitally connected to do your homework, mm -hmm. but you're spending time on YouTube, and it's hard to right. to stop that. And that's like a serious addiction that all of us have now. We're always on our phone. And Mom's always on her phone. I'm always on my phone. If my phone wasn't over there, I'd probably be looking at it right now. You know what I mean? So it's a serious problem that adults face as well. So it's definitely tougher for you guys. You should have less discipline than us. And right. we're asking you to do something that we have a hard time doing as adults. And even at home, there's a lot more like distractions, whether it be a snack in the middle of the day or breakfast to start off the day. Or second Obviously, breakfast if you're forced. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you're not going to wake up at six o'clock to do school. Well, I'm sure some people are, but most people aren't going to wake up like it's a normal school day and, you know, get ready for school and pretend there's a bus and then go do school. Like people are waking up later and, you know, kids really don't want to do six hours of work, especially when they're not understanding things. And um, what if you did wake up earlier though? What if you got right. up before we got up? You went downstairs, no one's awake, and you can get in there and you can knock it out. It'd be Jocko style, Jocko Willink. Well, yeah, but Jocko <laughs> Willink is like the. He's kind of like the poster boy for the ultimate self discipline and the ultimate. Uh, and he's just his ultimate self. He's really. Jocko Willink, especially, is somebody who's really good at um, using his time and using his skill efficiently. Um, and you can see it as he's a beast and uh, in the books he writes um, I've only read one but in his kids book especially you kind of see his ability to self-discipline leak through do you and, think that's an acquired skill or do you think that's something you're born with um some people well here's the thing I think a lot of procrastinators are people who overthink things um, and you know you usually I think some people be, you can acquire procrastination, but a lot of the times, like for me at least, I've kind of been a procrastinator my whole life, and um, maybe he was born a procrastinator too. Uh, self self discipline is something hard to attain, but it's something that you can attain. Um, but maybe he wasn't really. Maybe when he was born and he grew up, he never really dealt with like procrastination, and maybe he just he's a very straightforward thinker. And uh, I think that's a blessing and a curse. I think um, I think I have the ability, like I always hate saying that I'm like smart or creative or whatever because it feels like I'm bragging. But I definitely think me being a procrastinator leads to me coming up with more creative ideas and being more creative. But if I was a straightforward thinker, like I could, I could be getting lots of work done. I could be doing extra study. And I could be like, I could be the ultimate student. But at the same time, some of those kids who get straight A's will end up like being stuck in an office job. 
And um, I feel like in some cases, people who get lower grades might end up falling into uh, an area where they, they can use art to support themselves. So I think it's just, I think either way there's something good about it, but I think Jocko Willink probably wasn't, really didn't deal with procrastination and uh, just through learning more of his self and being able to self-discipline while also being more of a straightforward thinker, he's allowed himself to become so efficient. I, um, I think you're conflating two different, um, two different ideas and two different mindsets because you're talking about the difference between being artistic and doing well in school and, you know, being more free spirited and not doing as well in school. And both of those things have very little to do with discipline because even the people that drop out of high school and they become, you know, giant entrepreneurs, Jesus, can you get that word out because I'm burping at the same time. Uh, I can't even edit it out now. We've got like three videos going on. But um, entrepreneurs that drop out even in high school and they still go on and they become rich. Uh, a lot of the difference between what they're doing and what the person that goes through college and gets a desk, boring desk job are is self-discipline. They have the self-discipline and the desire to get up every morning and outwork right. all their competitors, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's but... how they succeed. And even guys like Bill Gates and, you know, like that's what they do. They outwork the competitors and they're, they're just savages, bro. But I think Jocko can do whatever he wants. If Jocko wanted to become a, like a billionaire entrepreneur, he could have done that. I think if Jocko Willink wanted to stay in the army and become the ultimate soldier, he could have done that. I think people that are huge entrepreneurs might need to find something that they can be, that they can work with. Like, I don't know if Bill Gates could have really become like an athlete. I don't know if Elon Musk could have become a, a painter. Well, I think before we get too far, this is what I'm talking about, conflating different things because like your career path is what your innate abilities let you do, you know? So you're creative, you're gonna do something creative, right? That's your goal. So that's different than hard work because if you're a painter, you still have to outwork everybody. It's just, you're gonna work in a different area. So right. what I'm, I'm talking about two different things, I'm not trying to conflate them together. Mm -hmm. Just think, so we are, we're kind of on the same page. Yeah, I think though, you know, Jocko has this kind of self-discipline. He's, he's really mastered self-discipline. And I think he's mastered self-discipline to a point where he's able to apply those skills to anything um you know there are some things that i want to do that i feel like i could put myself on a schedule and do but you know i don't know if i can do that for everything i've never really been able to uh consistently work out without like classes without like thai classes and stuff i mean i've tried i try to wake up earlier and do things and you I just... got me out of bed a couple of times ago running with you before school right but i i wasn't able to keep that up i think though like but do you really want to do that? Exactly. Waking up early and running isn't fun. Um, no, I mean, are you interested in that level of fitness? Uh, I'm interested in that level of fitness, but as soon as I do it, it's just like, it's not fun. I can't wake up. Like sometimes you just sleep in and, um, you know, but something I'm good, like better at, like uh, something I have a, a good ability to do, um, I think I can do more and better. Like, it's kind of the difference between, it's kind of the difference in me between uh, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. Um, I don't, like, Gi Jiu Jitsu just, I don't know, it's just boring to me and I just don't really like it because somebody can, like, grab my Gi and control the fight that way. But in Thai, I'm, like, pretty talented in doing that. Well, once I started learning Muay Thai, I think I got good at it quicker than a normal person might. But with jiu-jitsu, I'm just like every other guy. I Sometimes I struggle to grasp a jiu-jitsu concept, especially in gi with the grips and stuff. But in Muay Thai, it just kind of comes natural sometimes. And uh, I think that would allow me to not be so discouraged, maybe. I think uh, some of your jiu-jitsu problem is sensory. Uh, like you don't like your chin tucks, you like your ticklish there. <laughs> You don't like the way the gi feels on you, you know what I mean? So right. a lot of the sensory, and mm -hmm. I don't think that you're untalented at jujitsu. I always thought you were good. Well, um, yeah. Just lately, I say you're better at Muay Thai, like the last, I don't know, maybe five years, because you are you got hurt in that jujitsu tournament, and ever since then, you haven't really been as interested. 
And uh, if you're not interested, you're not applying your mind. When you're not applying your mind, you're not as good. You apply your mind when we tie much more in jujitsu. And jujitsu, you're just kind of like, bah, whatever. Right. You know what I mean? But I feel, I feel like if we go back to Jocko, I feel like he's his self discipline is to where he can apply his mind to anything. I don't think he's really. I think his limitations of you know I don't want to do this and I want to do this are a little bit less. Right, and what I'm saying is that he wasn't born with that. He um, right. He developed that, and that's something I want to see you do, and that's why I turned you on to who Jocko is, because I do believe that you can make yourself disciplined. Do you think I'm disciplined? Mm, with some things, like working out, you, you, if you set yourself to, like, at home lately, you've been doing, you've been banging out those workouts, like, every day, but, like, with editing, you'll get frustrated, and you'll have to, like, stop. Um, I, I, put, I get it done, I never not put it out. Right. You always get it done, but I don't think you... When you get frustrated, you stop and you come back. Um, That's discipline too, because when people right. get frustrated, they quit. Right. We all, like, we're pretty disciplined, but, like, um, <laughs> you're pretty disciplined, but, like, uh, <laughs> you're very disciplined, but, um, like, I don't know, some people could just go right through the frustration and do it, right? And I think that's kind of, that's another thing that you just, you either have it or, or that's one thing that well, you have to acquire. Is. Here's the thing, I'm not innately talented at editing, I suck at it. Right. So, like, I'm learning everything as I'm going and I'm mm -hmm. frustrated because I'm, I have a deadline to get it out. It's not like I'm just trying to do it for fun, I'm trying to get right. these videos out so everyone has them. And, um, like, I, can, I got new software and I'm trying to figure all that out, so... It, it's tough and uh, you know like I work all day it's not yeah. like I'm just playing around but I, I think I am disciplined enough to get it done mm -hmm. and that's like I don't expect you to be doing killer on your homework I expect you to you know pretty much be just getting it done at yeah. this point the other thing is like I think I do okay with a deadline when I have my homework um, I think I'm willing to stay up later than when I just have work um, a lot of teachers have been like, uh, take your time, right? Uh, the due dates is, it's not set in stone. And I think that also hurt, I think that also hurts my ability to get things done. Um, I'm just not good at setting my goals, which is kind of another part of self-discipline, right? So. I, guess I would say that's something totally different, to be honest with you. I think goal setting is different than having the discipline to do it. Because you can have the discipline to do something every day and if you don't have a goal, you just do what you're supposed to do, you don't get anywhere, but you're still disciplined. So you can be disciplined and not have a goal, it just means you're not going to be successful. But a deadline is a goal, right? A deadline would be a goal. So if you set yourself a deadline, and then you're like, ah, I'm doing this for fun, I can just let my deadline slip, mm -hmm. um, I think that is part of self-discipline, right? Because if you're setting your own goal, and a deadline is a goal, and uh, you say you're editing a video for fun, trying to figure out Camtasia, right? You're using Camtasia, right? Correct. So let's say let's say you take the camcorder around and you do another day in the life of caveman, uh, and you're just doing this for fun. You don't really have a, you like, you you go into the you go into this with a mindset of having fun, but you know as more and more days pass and you're not really getting it done, you set a deadline for yourself, and you get a lot of work done, but by that deadline it's not done. Do you now work furiously till the end, or do you just kind of let that deadline slip? Because I know, work furiously to the end because I said deadline, <laughs> whether it's for fun or not. Like, I mean, that's just right. my personality. But and I feel like, I feel like when I do, I think, I feel like when I set myself a goal, sometimes can, I can I um. No, no, like I want to try and I know you're gonna keep talking, but we're almost at twenty five minutes. I don't know how much uh, room that camera has. So I'm going to jump into what I would finish with, and uh, I would say that learning to set a, a goal is a, a, something that you have to do for yourself and try and create accountability. So like what I was just thinking, for example, that you said, I have that video, um, I wanted to get it out. What I would do is I'd post something on Facebook that says I'm going to put it out, and then it's right there and I have to do it. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's one of the best ways to hold yourself accountable. Tell someone what your goal is. Tell mom what your goal is. If you tell mom what your goal is, you know you're going to get it done because mom's going to make you get it done. Right. And that would be my advice to help you get accountable or post it online or tell your right. friends or tell me. But then it's not really setting... But then you actually have a deadline, right? Right. But, but that if... you put your goal 
whatever your goal is, you write it down or you make it a tangible goal so everyone right. knows. You don't just keep it in your head. But if you have a tangible goal even in your head, like I'll set a goal of like, well, I need to get, I need to get these things done. Let me get these things done. And then slowly I start to realize I'm not going to get these things done. And this happens to me a lot. I just, you know, I just, I just don't end up finishing my goals. Um, you know, I have a tangible goal of, okay, I need to get this assignment done and this assignment done. And by the end of the day, I only did one assignment. Um, sometimes it means that you gotta sacrifice stuff. Right. Like turn YouTube off or go in your mm -hmm. room and do it instead of being online or, I mean, that, that's the stuff that has to happen sometimes. Right. But to reach goals. But to create accountability for your own personal goal that you keep to yourself, that's part of self-discipline then. Because creating accountability is just like uh, having the discipline to finish something. Accountability is, I would say accountability would be making sure that you finish your goals and you got to make yourself do that however you want to do it. Um, if you can't hold yourself accountable, you put it out in public space. So then yeah. when you put it out in public space and you have to hold it accountable or you're going to look bad in front of other people. Whatever exactly. motivates you, you know, you have to find what motivates you to get it done. So, but then if you don't have self discipline then you wouldn't be able to really do uh do your goal yourself so like i think accountability and um the what happens is like it has to hurt you so bad when you fail your goal that it makes you get it done and if it right. doesn't hurt you that bad then that goal is not something you're really interested in you need to find a different way to um uh i don't know like get yourself going i mean but isn't isn't that kind of just the same thing that you would have if you had self discipline? Like if I have self discipline, that, that is how you get self discipline. That's what self discipline people do. They make make goals and right. they make it hurt so bad if they don't accomplish it that they get it done. No so matter the, what. so they're the they're like they're so better setting in their goals. Mind. So setting goals would be the you know would be self discipline. Yeah, and accomplishing those goals that you set no right. matter what. You know that's what self discipline is pretty much. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get off that topic for now. Uh -huh. uh, we're 26 minutes in. Um, so basically you're saying you're teaching yourself at home. I'm not teaching myself anything. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's what you're expected to do. Like, you're not really right. getting a lot of teaching. Yeah, which, you know, it, it's difficult because I have the textbook, but if I go to school, and we read the textbook with the teacher. The teacher will, tell, will go like, hey, you read. And then uh, when you're done reading, pick somebody to read. Mm -hmm. But every time, but like as we read the paragraphs, he'll stop us somewhere. And he'll turn like these, he'll turn science words into, uh, into he'll turn it into layman's terms. And it's a lot easier to understand that way. Right. And I think when you don't have that knowledge yourself, it's harder to understand it. Um, and I think, I think the idea that you can, you can, you uh, can, you can do school at home to replace school. It, it just kind of doesn't make sense to me because without teachers and without that amount of knowledge, you, um, you can't really learn well. You don't, you don't get the same understanding that you would when you're in school with a teacher. And maybe what they mean is, you know, having conferences with your teacher, which makes a little more sense. But, um, even that idea is kind of flawed, I think. Uh, because in some cases, the teacher will draw something or they'll write something that makes it easier to understand. And that's going to be hard to convey across a computer um, because we just, like, some teachers don't have that technology. And that technology isn't uh, easily accessible for teachers. And this is, like, this is getting into my opinion about, you know, school at home. Um, and I think school is also just important as developing as a person. Um, when you go to school, you develop social skills and you kind of learn how to talk to people. And being forced to go to school with the same people every day, make sure that you are, you know, having social interaction. And in a lot of ways, you're learning how to behave well, especially in like pre-K and kindergarten. And I don't think you can really depend on parents to discipline their kids because, you know, kids drive parents crazy. <laughs> I think we did a pretty good job disciplining you. You're pretty young, um, smart right. man. But without my experiences at school, you would have to have all those experiences with me at home. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinion about school at home. I just don't think it really works. Right. right. I, I agree with you on most of that. Um, 
What's it like having us be home more? It's really the same. Mom has to do work. Uh, you work most days of the week, so it's it's pretty much the same. Uh, all I get is better lunch. And, um, <laughs> all I get is better lunch and, you know, not having to ride the bus, pretty much. I I'm mean, home at night times now. I'm not right. at the gym all night. That's, that's also an interesting part. And I also get to see daylight, which is really, really, like, which is nice. If I want to, I can I can take a five minute break outside or whatever. And you know, at school you can't really control those things. And some spaces in school you don't really see the light of day. So I'm glad in some ways, because um, it's a lot better than school having to be stuck in a classroom all day. Uh, you recover from your foot injury pretty well. Uh, you want to yeah. talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you're in a cast leaving school and or boot. I mean, at least not a cast, but mm -hmm. same thing really. And now I can. Uh, now I'm clear to start running on soft ground. Except it started snowing, so we didn't run. Yeah, it's been a little rainy and snowy <laughs> in uh, in the middle of May, which has been a little frustrating. Uh, so it rained again today, so I'll have to let the ground dry for a couple more days. I'm going to run in the morning if you want me to wake you up. Well, I have to run on soft ground. I'm going to run. Well, we can take the car and run up, go up to the path. I don't run. I don't run. I don't want to run in mud. Oh, okay. My shoes are pretty new. Uh, and I don't want to hurt myself again because I wake up at four thirty in the morning, and we can go on Jocko's Instagram, look at his watch, and go running if you want. <laughs> no good, huh? All right. No. Well, we'll uh, I hold pass for you tomorrow for sure. Right. And we'll do some pad work. One thing, for video. It's it's nuts the how my cardio has just plummeted. Like, I, I can't even, like, run a quarter of a mile. It sucks. Yeah, you're pretty out of shape. You're getting a little rounder. <laughs> but yeah. you're working hard to get back in shape. We, we were jumping rope. We did jump rope together. We've been doing the videos together. That's the last thing I want to talk to you about before we get out of here today. Uh, I wanted to thank you for helping me do the videos for the uh, students at Western York on May and the Integrity Kids. Uh, I really appreciate you doing the videos. And I kind of like how you took over being the YouTube guy. Yeah. Uh... If I could, I would really want to take over the YouTube channel. Uh, there are a lot of things that we could improve, but you know, it costs money and we're not making money. So, uh, if you're here still, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can uh, start making money and you won't have to, you know, watch me on a... Uh It'll get better. It might not be so grainy in the background anymore. Yeah. Um, that's a lighting problem, I'm telling you. Like, it, cause it looks good in the light. There's a lot of, like, yeah. It's hard to get so much light, especially without a big area light. We're going to find out when we go outside and we do a video outside. We're going to do a video outside as soon as it stops snowing out and it's more than 40 degrees outside. So uh, you'll sucks. see. I know. This April, been... like today's been the first day that's warm outside and it lasted for about, you know, two hours and then it started raining. And yeah, I know. I was at work the whole time, so I haven't even experienced a nice weather. Oh, I got a video to show you about the killer hornets too. Like a guy gets stung by one. His best. Uh, this guy, uh, Coyote Peterson. He's yep. stung by everything. Do you watch those videos? Uh, I watched some of them at one point. He he also did he also did ten things you need to know about murder hornets. And <laughs> no, they're not going to invade. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. He's like I was watching him get stung by a bunch of stuff. He even got pinched by a lobster. So yeah. well, me and Derek been watching him lunch all the time. Those things are nasty. Yeah. But uh, back to the videos real quick. Um, I want to thank everybody that watches them, and I also kind of want to talk about you know I think they're important. I think they're good for us to do. Um, and then they're getting a lot of views as well. So, uh, well, thank you to everybody that's watching them first and foremost. And second, I hope you're, you're enjoying them and you're learning from them. Uh, just like everything else, it's hard to, just like school and just like, uh, setting your own goals, it's getting harder, uh, as each day goes by during this pandemic. So, um, I hope you guys are learning and I hope you guys are enjoying the videos and I think they're really important. I do too. I wanted to make sure that I can reach everybody. So I want to make sure they're free and there's no way, no difficulty getting to them. I just want to make sure that everyone can get out and get them. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, like the, the end goal is that everyone feels better, but you know, also get my name out there and the Integrity brand out there and the Western New York MMA brand out there. So people come train with me, even if uh, they're not training with us now, or if they can't train, I still want to have access to me, especially now, you know, I think it's important to try and stay in touch with the kids because they gotta be feeling just like you, man. I feel terrible for you. You're, 
going through something that no kid has ever gone through in mm. the history of school, really. I just realized this. The worst part is I'm in eighth grade. And uh, it's just like going from fourth to fifth. It's just as big of a jump to go from middle school to high school. And that's one thing that's also got me kind of worried whenever I think about it is, you know, next year I'm going to be a freshman, which, I mean, it's not a huge jump. But going into high school, it, I just feel like it's it's going to be worst case scenario for me to be in this situation right before I go into freshman year. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be tough, but there's going to be a bunch of other people doing it. And I think they're going to make uh, special exceptions for you guys, too. Mm -hmm. If you guys even go back in September, which is, like, who knows what's going on. It's so crazy right now. Yeah. Especially in New York. But, um, I mean, it'll it'll all work out. Eventually, we'll be going back to school. I feel, to be honest with you, I feel worse for Destiny. She's going to miss her prom and her graduation, you know? That's... It sucks for class of 2020. Yeah. Class of 2020 in college and class of 2020 in mm -hmm. high school. I mean, props to you for sticking it out in this, like... Yeah, I can't imagine, uh, you know, not being able to do senior prom and not going to graduation. It just for those kids, it must be so much to miss out on. Like you yeah. can't even graduate from high school. That kind of sucks. Right. Like I don't have my moving up day, but it's whatever. I'm going from eighth grade to ninth grade. It's not as big as you know finishing school. At least you got your sign. College. <laughs> you graduated, uh, graduated eighth grade. Uh, <laughs> sign out in front. Oh, um, it's crazy. I graduated from eighth grade. Wow. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure your grades are locked, so I think you're okay, but you know, you still got to get the homework done. That's, uh -huh. that's what it's all about. Um, we'll cut it off here. I really like this, so hopefully we can start doing these on Fridays that we're not doing the videos. Um, as long as the pandemic is going on and the gyms are closed, it looks like August or September before Integrity is going to open. Yeah. So we'll be doing these for a while. You know what is open? What's that? All is done. Not yet. I thought they, well, they're opening soon. They're right? opening soon. They're they announced opening. that they're opening. Yeah, if they were open, I'm going to get mom some donuts when they open. And I'll get you some donuts too so you can have a second and third breakfast. <laughs> Their donuts um, are sick. If you live in the area, Paula's Donuts is the best donuts you can get. And they don't even sponsor us yet. No. But hopefully that encourages them a little bit. Yeah, now like, we're, we're getting a lot of hits these days. Just like you've been subtly encouraging Rockstar to sponsor you. I don't know what you're talking about with Rockstar. <laughs> <laughs> Rockstar should sponsor me. Yeah. Just like the President of the United States should sponsor me so I can use their music in all my videos. Alright, anything else to say in closing? Um, stay safe. Uh, however long this lockdown lasts, stay at home, please. Um, there's no vaccine yet, and there are some people that are really vulnerable right now. So the best thing that you can do is stay home and make the best of uh, this quarantine. If you're an adult and you don't have too much work, maybe pick up a new hobby. Or if you're a kid and you don't have too much work, maybe pick up a hobby. you got to do whatever you can to stay at home right now. Um, that's what the whole country is doing. So if you live in the United States or you live anywhere in a lockdown, please stay home and stay safe. Go out and party. Go to the beaches. I mean, if you live in Florida. We, uh, this is one of the things we argue about, like, when it's safe to open up. So, maybe we can get into that next week. Oh, we're, we're that one's getting, uh, destroyed in the algorithm. Yeah, and if you knock over my rock star when we're arguing, I will choke you to death. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make you angry. Maybe I'll win the argument. No, no way. <laughs> I'll be calm as long as we're on camera and they uh. film me. I can't choke you. <laughs> as soon as the camera goes off, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Alright man, I love you. Uh and we're out. Um if you're still here, which is kind of nuts, we, we kind of rambled on a lot of about a lot of things, but that's what's a pot that's what a podcast is for. But if you are still here um and you like our videos this much, then you're probably gonna want to get notified when we upload a new video. So for your sake, don't forget to hit the notification bell um and set it to all. Because then uh, our videos will either pop up on your phone or whenever you open YouTube on a computer uh, or a laptop, it'll show up in your inbox. You're the best show guy ever. We're up to 207. Thank you, Primo Luciano, for subscribing. Nice. We are out.